Hi YouTube, Mad Scientist 72 here. Okay, so this is the um, carbonyl sulfide experiment that I was uh, referring to before, and we're ready to do this today. And uh, so, uh, basically, this is a, an extension of the Miller-Urey experiment. In the Miller-Urey experiment, we took uh, nitrogen and carbon dioxide and water vapor, passed a high voltage spark through that to create amino acids, and now what we're going to do is take those amino acids. Uh, I actually mixed up a separate solution of amino acids. We're going to take those amino acids and uh, create peptides using a, a gas called carbonyl sulfide. And carbonyl sulfide is a byproduct of volcanic activity. So if you can imagine in the prebiotic earth environment, uh, you would have nitrogen and CO2 in the atmosphere and water vapor, and lightning would, would pass through the atmosphere in a thunderstorm, and then that would create amino acids, which would then rain down. And potentially, it would, those amino acids would rain down in an area where you had a high level of volcanic activity. And then the carbonyl sulfide produced from the volcano would uh, bubble through that solution of amino acids, the, the rain, and it would bubble through the uh, amino acid solution, and you would create peptides. Okay, and to do that, we're going to mix um, a, a mixture of sulfuric acid with uh, potassium thiocyanate. And then that mixture is going to be in that flask. And then the gas, carbonyl sulfide, will be produced. And it will be bubbled through this mixture of amino acids. And in the experiment uh, that I referred to, to to do this, they added a small amount of potassium ferrocyanide to their solution of amino acids. To, uh, as, as a catalyst, I would presume. And uh, yet after five minutes of uh, bubbling carbonyl sulfide through that solution, uh, peptides were produced in, in great quantity. So that's the experiment that we're going to do today. Okay, so here's the reaction which I will perform today. It involves reacting one mole of potassium thiocyanate with two moles of sulfuric acid and one mole of water. I will be using 10 grams of potassium thiocyanate and approximately 80 milliliters of sulfuric acid, which is an excess of sulfuric acid. In this reaction, potassium bisulfate and ammonium bisulfate are produced along with the carbonyl sulfide gas. Also, the optimum temperature for this reaction to take place is between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, so here is the reaction taking place. The potassium thiocyanate starts out as a white solid, but upon reaction with the sulfuric acid, an orange color is produced. I should also note that this is the beginning of the reaction which you are seeing. Uh, the uh, reaction proceeded much more quickly uh, once it got underway. And of course, here is our beaker with the amino acid solution. And you can see the bubbles of carbon and sulfide slowly bubbling through the solution. And this is the proposed reaction mechanism for carbonyl sulfide mediated peptide synthesis. I am an amateur scientist and I don't have a degree in chemistry, so there really isn't much I can say about this mechanism other than the fact that it works. If anybody out there can explain the mechanism in detail, please feel free to comment. Well, once again, I find myself without a cameraman, but that's all right because I'll just uh, do this uh, testing myself. Okay, so what we have here is the uh, control solution, which is a, a solution of amino acids, and it has a very small amount of potassium ferrocyanide, uh, presumably that's a catalyst, which is mixed in, which is uh, responsible for that light green color that you see. And th this is the uh, experimental solution. This is the solution to which I subjected uh, carbonyl sulfide. So we're going to test these two, and we're going to see if we've uh, created any amino acids. And also, I have um, Biret reagent, which is used to test for peptides. So that's how we will determine whether any peptides were produced from this experiment. Okay, so first, I'm going to take a small sample, uh, two milliliters, 
of the uh, the control and with my pipette here and we're going to um, add it to the test tube and it's one this is a one milliliter pipette and that would be two okay so now we're going to uh, add some biret reagent and so I'm just going to add it from the bottle here I'm going to measure it out in my graduated cylinder and add it to the bottle or add it to the uh, test tube okay yeah so that is two milliliters of biuret so now we're going to add that to the test tube containing the control now this will be the standard by which we compare the experimental solution because both solutions are identical um, except for the fact that carbonyl sulfide has been bubbled through the experimental solution okay so mixing it up a little bit and you can see that we have a green color now I have to say a word about biuret reagent um, normally when you have a colorless solution um, and you would uh, add biuret um, it would uh, be a it would the result would be a sky blue color for a negative test but since we have uh, potassium ferrocyanide mixed in um, which distorts the color of the solution a little bit and so this is actually green so but that's going to be our standard for comparison so now we're going to take the other test tube this is the experimental mixture and I'm going to add uh, some of the experimental solution to the test tube two, two mLs again add that carefully to the test tube and again if we had a colorless solution and this tested positive for peptides we would expect um, a purple color to result but since again since we have the potassium ferrocyanide the color is going to be a little bit distorted probably that would be my guess and so now we're going to add the biuret reagent to the experimental solution we'll measure out two milliliters of biuret and add that okay so there is two mLs of biuret we're going to add that to our experimental solution if the color stays uh, the same as the control then there were no peptides produced but if it turns a different color then obviously that would indicate the presence of peptides so we're going to add it to the biuret to our experimental solution and we'll see mix that up a little bit and well what do you know our uh, our experimental solution is a, a fairly dark blue I would say fairly maybe not dark blue but um, fairly blue color now notice that the control was green when we added the biuret and the experimental solution is blue so that tells me that um, peptides were indeed produced from this experiment and so I would say that this was a success yeah. and again if we had a colorless solution um, the colors would be uh, light sky blue and purple but since we have the potassium ferrocyanide added um, these are the resulting colors so this was experiment was a success and uh, I indeed did create peptides uh, from carbonyl sulfide bubbled through a solution of amino acids so thank you very much for watching I'm very proud of this result I just want to thank everyone again for watching and 
Stay tuned for more experiments on my channel.